Hello, bookworms! <laughs> Welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm Icy. And I'm Ivy. And we are... Mangos, Mangos and Books. It's finally halfway through the year and we decided to do a mid-year check-in tag. You were tagged by Emily. We will link her channel down below and also the tag creator down below. So check them out. Yeah. And we begin. So we're doing this tag and we don't know each other's books. I don't know what her answers to the questions are. So, oh, Surprise factor. Dun, dun, dun. Question number one. How many books have you read so far this year? So far, I've read 19 books this year. I've read two graphic novels and I listened to three audiobooks. I'm currently reading my 20th book, Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. I'm currently on my 16th book, which is Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. Pretty good. Book number 16 because full time job. Question number two. What's your favorite book so far this year? My favorite book would be Without a Doubt, Sight by Neil Schuster. So this book is about a futuristic world where there is no war, no death, no illness. It's kind of like a utopia, but not really. And then, since there's no death, there's sites who glean people to make sure there's population control. And we'll talk more about that because I don't want to get into it too much. But this is the best book I've read so far this year because it's nothing like I've ever read. And it, it blew my mind so many times. The same book for me. It's Sight by Neil Shusterman. Why? It's the best. Yeah. What's the most disappointing book you've read this year? Mine wasn't really a disappointing book. There was a part that disappointed me. Maybe because I dove into it with high expectations. Mm -hmm. I think it was just trying too hard. What book is this? Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. What's it about? So it's about girls fighting back, girl power, feminism. So I'm really into feminism and girl power and all that girl revolution stuff. So I thought it was going to be a, an awesome book. It is awesome, but there was just this part. Okay, if you want to read this book or you're currently reading this, because it's, I think, a bit spoilery. So there's this part where the... <laughs> There's this part where the protagonist kind of like went out with the boy she liked and she was expecting like a kiss after the date or something and then it didn't happen. The kiss didn't happen and then she went home crying in her room. She cried the whole night and I was like, what the fuck is this? Don't cry over boys. They ain't worth that. The whole book wasn't really a disappointment. It was just that part of the book. But other than that, it ended okay. Maybe because if I read this without expectations, then I wouldn't be as disappointed. It's just that part was so... <laughs> what the... <sighs> it's like, it's encouraging children, young women, that it's okay, it's normal to cry for boys, but no, mm. don't, don't. Mm. That's one hard thing about reading contemporary young adults. It's like sometimes True. the love story is too quick. Yeah. Like they end up together. Mm -hmm. the what? What? You just, it's the only page too. <laughs> you guys are together already. Oh, biggest disappointment of this year. I was kind of disappointed. It's about a fantasy, a magical place somewhere in Africa. The royal people abolished magic so that they can properly rule. And they oppress those who were born into magic. And then there's this girl who wants to fight back because they killed her mom. Fair enough. But it was just very linear. Everything was going going on a straight line. I found that there weren't any surprising twists. And I guess the only thing that I liked about this book is Amari. She's one of the characters. She's one of the royals who ran away with, with the magic people. 
and tried to save them. Much. It was kind of like the Red Queen, I think. Other than that. <laughs> Question number four. What genre have you read most this year? So looking back on my books I've read this year through my reading challenge on Goodreads, I've read seven young adult books and four normal fiction, four non-fiction books. So there's a mix of everything. I just wanted to mix it up. But I always keep coming back to young adult. <laughs> what kind of young adult like? More on sci-fi and fantasy young adult. For me, I've read mostly young adult and mostly contemporary futuristic sci-fi. Like what I mentioned, three audiobooks. Two of them are non-fiction. Question number five. Name a new favorite author that you've discovered this year. I'm guessing we're gonna have the same. <laughs> we have the same favorite new author that we discovered this year. Neil Shusterman. Hi, Neil. Yes. He's just so smart. I don't know how he comes up with ideas like that. And his vocabulary is very extensive. Very big words. I like it. I've learned like 500 new words. <laughs> very creative too. And the way he tells the story, the character development, the world building is awesome. It's like you're a part of it. But he explains everything so clearly. Like the complexities of Scythedom and the politics in Thunderhead. <gasps> mind blowing. I like a good mind blowing read. And, and, and a good shooked. 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 Number six. What's the most surprisingly good book you've read so far this year? So, one of the most underrated books that I saw in the library. This is not a test by oh. Courtney Summers. I read the blurb and it's about like a, a zombie apocalyptic world and a group of high school students escaped where the zombies were in their town and they stayed in inside their school where they were trapped. But what sets it apart from other zombie books is that there's like mental health issues involved. The protagonist has like daddy issues. She wants to escape and initially she wanted to just get out of the school and sacrifice herself to the zombies so she could like escape everything but then she meets these people and she still wants to look for her sister who ran away yeah it's just very very intriguing and i wasn't really expecting to like it but i did surprisingly good book for me is since you've been gone by morgan matson this is the second book i read by morgan matson the first book I read is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour. I liked it. I liked her writing and I borrowed this book from the library and expected to be so cheesy because look at the, the cover and the title. But again, it's Morgan Matson. I really like her writing. Her books aren't as cheesy as the other authors. So it's about a girl whose best friend disappeared out of nowhere. Her best friend gave her a list of things that will set her out of her comfort zone. It has a, the Paper Towns vibe to it. That's what I thought at first. I didn't expect it to be so good. It exceeded my expectations. I thought it was going to be all about a boy again. I, I like this and I want to read more of her books. What are your favorite and most anticipated 2018 releases. Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It was supposed to be released like last year, October 2017, but then it was pushed back to this year. We have been waiting for this last book for the Illumine files. And for the book that I haven't read yet, speaking of Morgan Matson from the previous question, Save the Date by Morgan Matson. There's a lot of people who read that. Yeah, that's why this is the only book that I've been seeing that's been released this year. Life Like. I didn't like Never Night for some reason, but I think Life Like would be a bit different. And I don't know if this counts, but I think Megan Spooner and Amy Kaufman are working on a book. Is it gonna be released this year? No. <laughs> but that's the closest I have. Number 8. 
What's your next big priority for your reading? Get to 30 books, which is my reading goal on Goodreads this year. And only read books that I actually enjoy because it's such a waste of time if you don't enjoy something and you just read it. It feels like a chore. Smash that reading goal! Read all the books I want to read. Oh yeah! All my TBR that's been staring at me while I sleep. <laughs> What's been your bookish highlight of the year so far? Mm, I wonder why. We don't have a separate one. Oh. <laughs> it's this channel. Yeah. This booktube will be our bookish highlight for the year. I haven't really watched any bookish booktubes on YouTube since this year. So it's like one of the highlights for me. Number 10. Who do you tag? I don't know. Tag you. You. And anyone who's watching this who feels like doing this tag, go ahead. And just let us know. And leave us some comments on the comments. <laughs> and leave us some comment. And leave us... <gasps> and leave us messages on the comments below. So that's our media check-in tag. Thanks to Emily from Who Gave a Right for tagging us. The link's down below. And thank you to those who commented on our previous first video. We know that it's been two weeks since yeah. our the last video. We were so tired last week. I napped and then I woke up it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and there was no lighting anymore, so... Oops. Yeah. Because we're trying to shoot our videos during the weekend because that's when we're not busy. Let us know if you've done this book tag on the comments below and we'll check your video out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye.